Okay, so it looks like we are underway. Opening attempt now from Yulders Jimabayeva. 75 kilos here. And uh, unfortunately not to be there. 75 is a pretty heavy lift for her to be opening up with. In the last few years, she hasn't snatched more than 76 kilos. 75 is pretty much, it's typically the weight that she ends up with. So I think what we're seeing here potentially is um, a lot of athletes playing the, the Italian game, of as we've sort of dubbed it recently, which is just that athletes are going to be opening up heavy because they want to move into that top eight, top 10, sorry. And right now we know that the top 10, to get into it, you have to have a 182 total or more. Interestingly, there are three athletes with 182 and they're in ninth, 10th and 11th ranking worldwide. Uh, I believe that it's whoever hits it first gets that spot rather than it being done on body weight, which is why the athlete in at number nine out of nine, 10, 11 is a 45 because she competed before the others but really these athletes are all going to be looking to push into those mid 180s to try and get into the top 10 in the world which i think is why we just saw a, a pretty heavy 75 kilo opener just then by yildas so she'll of course follow herself we've got a two minute clock now Okay, second attempt now, 75. And it just doesn't look particularly close. A little bit sluggish in the pool, not enough height on the bar. And so unfortunately, Yulduz Jimabayeva is in a pretty tough spot. She took the bronze medal at the Asian Championships last year, but that was the last time she competed internationally. Prior to that, it had been about a year since she competed again. So despite having competed quite a lot internationally, she's spacing them out a fair bit. Her first competition, I believe, was 2013 as a uh, youth lifter at the Youth World Championships. She placed 19th there as a 44 kilo lifter, snatched 53, cleaner jerked 63. So she's come on a long way. And as you can see, there are nine athletes in this category so it will be relatively fast paced we had a lot of discussion during the european championships between me and max as to the perfect number of athletes competing in a session my feeling is that these slightly smaller categories are a little bit more exciting eight nine ten tops i think we do have a, a category with 13 in it at this championships it might even be the 73s men's i believe it might be Okay, third attempt now for Yildiz Jimabayeva. This is important for her. She hasn't yet totaled during the Olympic qualifying period, so she does need to get away on the bar. Oh, and she fought for it, but just loses it behind. So a rough start to the first Olympic category here. Jimabayeva bombing out three missed lifts at 75 kilos. It'll be interesting to see whether she even bothers clean and jerking. She's extremely unlikely to get a medal in the clean and jerk, and now that she knows she can't put up a total to try and qualify for the Olympics, I'm not convinced she will be coming out again, but we'll have to wait and see. So the next athlete up is going to be our uh, Vietnamese lifter. It's uh, Din Thi Pham. 80 kilos is her best snatch, so hopefully, well, <laughs> another pretty um, pretty heavy opener. And it's not the start that we want to see at these Asian Championships, but I think this is something that we're going to see more and more of, is uh, 
this new qualifying procedure for the Olympics just is calling for gutsier, crazier attempts. It's no longer about trying to average out four great competitions, four great totals, as it was for um, Tokyo, where you had to compete in each of the qualifying periods, get up totals, and then your totals were averaged out, and you just had to prove that you're a top eight lifter. Now it's just compete a bunch of times, will take your best total, and all of the best totals will be ranked and the top 10 are going. And so people are just, you know, throwing Hail Marys to see what they can do. So just taking a look at the chat right now so people can see. Um, We did have a, a post about Shizu Yong hitting a 160 kilo front squat. I uh, can't imagine he's competing this week, is, is a comment from Max. Uh, from what I know, uh, he's he's put in a, an entry total that is so low it puts him in the B session. And uh, from what I've heard from, I guess you could call them inside sources, he's, he's not actually planning to compete. So Shizu Yong, as far as I know, from what I've been told, is the only athlete in the Chinese squad at the Seijin Championships who will not be lifting. Everybody else will. So tomorrow we get to see the battle between Chen Li Jun, who's dropped down from 67, the Olympic champion, and Li Fa Bin. Second attempt now. Oh my word. And <laughs> it wasn't easy, nothing's for free in the sport, but she makes a lift. Heavy bias over onto that right hand side. But she's so strong, she's able to just hold it, bring herself back. I wonder if we can get a note to that central referee and ask them to just lower the lower the chairs, maybe sit on the floor or something, because that chair has got some height to it. In terms of the camera angles, we are working on getting more. We've been informed that there might be somewhere close to five cameras that we'll be able to access. Clearly not for this session, or at least not so far in this session, but things may well change. Is Cheng Jin Lin from Taipei. 79 is her best snatch. Here's 80. Oh, she gets up with it, but I don't think she's going to get given it. That looked a little bit pressy on both elbows. No lift. Yeah, she's given the no lift there. Still the same weight. 80 kilograms. Another lifter. First She'll have. Indonesia. Oh, actually, yeah, we have an Indonesian athlete with 80 kilos also who may well now bump up to 81 kilos to steal the clock of Cheng. Which, depending on how strong, of course, Windy Isa is feeling, that could be a a bold move. But no, I think she's... Yeah, Windy Isa is going to come out for it. She's in her own race, I suppose. Wow, this has really been a bit of a bloodbath starter of a uh, of a session. Eighty kilograms once again. Second attempt, Chinese Taipei Lin Qingjing. Seven attempts, one made left. Okay, so straight back out now for our athlete from Taipei. This is Cheng Jing Lin. She just missed her opener, pressed it out. Can she be a bit snappier? Yes, she can. Much better left. And finally, she's on the board. And she's on the board with the personal best. She's never made 80 internationally. She's only competed five times before. Placed four totals, so this is uh, her sixth. Her first international was the 2019 World Champs. She placed 15th there. She did cut down to the 45s at one point. That was at the World Champs in Uzbekistan 2021. Very fun World Championships. 
will be back there actually next year for the Asian Championships. Uh, but she placed fourth as a 45, but of course moved back up to the 49s once it became clear that this was going to be the Olympic category. Here's Windy Eisen out, 80 kilos, second attempt. That first lift looked ever so sluggish. Very slow in the pull, not a lot of pop at the top. But that one was much better. Again, she's quite slow in, in the pull. Just sneaks under the bar. There's not a lot of space for her to absorb the lift and, and ride it down, but she's able to get under it. And more importantly, get back up with it. So that's three athletes on the board. Five athletes still yet to open. We have Zhang Hui Hua with 88 kilos written in. Hu Ji Hui, the world record holder in the snatch with 85. Mirabai Chanu, 85 as well. But then we have uh, Surajana from Thailand has 88. And our other athlete from Thailand, Su Rowan, with 87. So we've been talking about this as a battle between the Chinese and, and Mirabai from India, but it looks like the two Thai lifters are planning on making a bit of an assault on this session. Tough day for Vietnam, 79 kilos for Din Thi Pham will be her last lift. It looks like Chen Jing Lin is going to go for 83 on her final attempt, as is Windy Isa, which considering how their second attempts both looked and how their misses at 80 on their first attempts looked, I think this is probably the right call. I wouldn't want to stretch much further than that. Five athletes still to open. Four athletes almost finished now with their totals and then, sorry, with their snatches and then the real battle begins. This will be a four kilo personal best on the international stage. And she just loops it. She gave it some though. Clearly put in a lot of force, a lot of effort on that one. Stayed up top with it a little bit too long before transitioning under and then just lost behind. Got a courageous pull. Windy now will come out. Of course, we've seen her compete successfully so many times and it just seems like she's had a bit of a drop off in performance. She won the Junior World Championships back in 2019, snatching 81. So if she walks away with just 80 today, that's not great. 2021, she won them again with an 86 snatch. She snatched 87 at Asian Juniors in 2020. But there's just such a lack of speed in the pull. You know, she is one of the taller athletes here, and she may well be struggling with her height. She did bump up to eight to uh, 55 briefly for the Asian Championships last year. She didn't fill out the 55 kilo category, but she weighed in at 52.95. So she had a lot more weight on her, and she looked much better, and she looked much happier as well. You can see in the body language today, she just doesn't look particularly pleased with, with her lifting, making just one attempt. So the Commonwealth Games champion, the Olympic silver medalist, the world record holder in the clean and jerk, very dangerous in the clean and jerk. Mirabai Chanu is coming out now. Spent a lot of time filming her in training at competitions and outside. She actually came and did a training camp at the gym that's within a stone's throw from where I live last year so I was able to get out there and film her and speak with her coach.
and she has to do a little bit of work to save it, but that's a pretty solid opener. I mean, 88 kilos is her best. She did that at the Commonwealth Games, so that's a pretty gutsy opening attempt there. She made a remarkable save at the World Championships. I believe it was 87 kilos. She duck walked, took a few steps forward, uh, and was able to get up with it. So I'm not sure anyone expected this. Hu Hui still not in, I guess, tip top shape since the Olympics will be the next athlete out the snatch world record holder out at 86 kilos. She took the bronze at the world championships. Snatched 89 kilos there, but of course she made 94 at the Olympic Games. And then when they had their epic battle, these three, the two Chinese and, and Mirabai in uh, 2021, that's where she snatched the 96 world record. And that's where Mirabai hit the 119 as well world record. And though she had to take a couple of steps forward, it looked like a very solid lift. So she's on the board. And you can just see the difference with these slightly stronger, more experienced athletes. Since the second pack has started opening, we've not seen any, any lifts missed yet. Two years ago at those Asian Championships, in fact, almost exactly two years ago, I think it was early May 2021, we saw the three athletes really push themselves to uh, go above and beyond anything they've done. That's where all of the world records in this category came from. Hu Jifui, Chan Yu Mirabai, and then Zhang Hui Hua had her record stolen there. So this is Suk Chiron a previous 45 kilo athlete, bumping up now to the 49 kilo category, the first time they've competed here. And looking incredibly strong. I mean, the most we've seen from Tanithon is 82 in the snatch. That was from the World Champs. Of course, she won there. In fact, she's competed three times internationally, won all three times, but such a dominant 45, she was now bumped up to 49. But, you know, just to gain four kilos in body weight and be opening up five kilos heavier is massive. I know that's almost 10% in body weight gone up, but still an enormous opener for her. And then, of course, I don't know if you remember, she power cleaned her cleaner jerks, 100 kilos for the win. So I think we're going to see Zhang Huihua out next with 88 kilos. Probably the most experienced athlete in the field. Been competing since the 2013 Asian Youth Games, which she won. In fact, she's won at nine international competitions now. She's never placed lower than second. And that's why, because she makes less look like that, that's a strong opener. I wonder if Team China is in the back of their mind thinking that she might be the 49 who was sent to Paris. Last time it was Hu Jihui, but since the Olympics, we haven't seen Hu Jihui return to top form yet, whereas Zhang's looking a little bit stronger. And if you're watching this live, do uh, feel free to use the chat. And of course, let us know if if the audio is coming through good. That would be worth us knowing. As far as we know, it's it's sounding okay. And then if you have any questions about this competition, again, do let us know. This is Sarachana. Her best is 88, so she's going to equal that here. Yeah, that looks a little bit tough. You know, she just didn't punch it out quick enough, so she caught it on slightly soft elbows. And then uh, 
wasn't able to press out and they just slowly, slowly crumbled. She missed it behind. So not looking to be in quite the same shape that her teammate Tanyathon is in. But we'll see Mirabai now come out with 88. We actually have three athletes with 88 written on. Although we know that Tanyathon Sukcharoan is only leaving it there as the automatic increase after her 87 make. Here's Mirabai. This will equal her personal best. So if she makes this, sh we know that she's in pretty good shape, which is exciting for the clean jerks because that's where she really excels. And it looks like she had a lot of speed in the pull. She held position very well, and then just her left side, right side of our screen, the bar was maybe a little bit lower during the pull, a little bit wonky. Never really locked out on that side. So, of course, the clock now goes to Tanyathon Suktaro and but that's the automatic increase at 88, so she will now bump up. Will it be 89? Will it be 90? We'll have to wait and see. And then that will bring out her teammate. But they're going to want to make that change pretty soon. So... I think they've made a mistake there because she's just straight back out with 88, one kilo up on her first attempt. I think the coaches failed to put in the change. Oh, what a waste of a, a lift that looked just as easy as the first did. Now, unless she snatches 89 kilos on a third attempt, uh, that was definitely a mistake. <laughs> uh, you really don't expect to see that at such a high level. I can only assume that with two athletes to coach in the back room, the staff were a little bit time pressured with the miss that had gone on from Mirabai and how that was going to impact their other athlete. And so they just missed putting in that change. But what a bizarre, what a bizarre thing to see on uh, Asian championships. Surachana Kambao now comes out. This will equal her best. She missed it on her first attempt. That's much better. You know, we mentioned that she just was a little bit soft in the elbows in her first attempt and couldn't hold it. Much snappier, much faster there. And on the board. So two athletes with second attempts remaining. Of course, that's Hu Jihui and Zhang Hui Hua. Zhang Hui Hua has put in for 92. But Mirabai will be the next athlete out. She's going to need this if she wants to have any chance at beating Zhang Hui Hua. She took the silver medal at the World Championships behind her with an 87 113. She totaled 200 kilos there. Whereas Zhang Hui Hua sort of ran away with it. 93 113, six kilos more in the total, and it all came from that snatch. Oh, she has so much power and speed at the top of the pole. But 85. I mean, optimistically, I suppose we can look at that and suggest that she's going to need a world record to win, and she's one of the athletes who can't get world records, so maybe there's something positive that can come out of that.
Okay, Huji Hui, just a three kilo jump here to 89. Just building on her lead. Not going to guarantee her a medal just yet in the snatch. And that's a great lift. You would expect nothing else from the snatch world record holder. Very solid. Now, of course, we should keep in mind as well the best total from the European Championships. 198 kilos from Mihaela Kambe, which coincidentally is also the equals the top total from the Pan American Championships from Jordan De La Cruz. Jordan did it first, so she technically ranks one spot higher. She's third. Mihaela is fourth. Mihaela did that with a 92 kilo snatch, much stronger than the snatch, and she is a clean and jerk. But I imagine as she gets a little bit older, we'll see her strength fill out a little bit more. So a two kilo jump here to me suggests that they made a, a mistake for sure with that second attempt at 88 kilos. And this will be an enormous eight kilo personal best on what she'd ever made prior to today. Of course, she's bumped up a category here. Wow, she has to fight for a little bit of rocking over to one side, but all three lifts look so strong. And that puts Tanya Thon Sukturon in a very dangerous place here, a 90 kilo snatch. We had a question come in in the chat. Seb, do you know what the heaviest percentage of body weight clean and jerk by a woman is? Um, I don't off the top of my head, but I do have a list of the top performances of all time, so I can probably get relatively close to that. Uh, in fact, I do have it ranked by percentage of body weight. So yes, I, I can probably find that out for you very quickly. The best ever clean and jerk by percentage of body weight as far as I can see, is Zulfia Chin Chanlo. 134 kilos she made in the clean and jerk, weighing 52.95. 2.5. Oh, what a fight! A little bit of movement, but I think it all came from the shoulders. Maybe a bit of scapular depression and elevation. A little bit of movement, tiny bit of movement, but those sh those elbows certainly looked faithful, looked loyal. So, yeah, the, the heaviest cleaner jerk by percentage of body weight, Zulfia Chin Chanlo, as a 53, she clean jerked 134 kilos, which is 2.53 times body weight. There are a couple of athletes, there's 2.52. For example, uh, Taylan from uh, Turkey was in there. She's number two, I believe. She clean jerked 121 kilos in the 48 kilo category, which is pretty amazing when you think about it because these athletes that we're watching now weigh a kilo more and will probably clean jerk a little bit less. Some names you may know of, I suppose. Quoting Chern has the 11th highest as a percentage of body weight, 2.45. Even she hit that 1.42 in the 58s. And that is just perfection there from Zhang Huihua. One attempt remains. I suppose we're going to see Hu Jihui either... No, she'll, she'll equal this, I imagine, 92. She could, of course, go for 93 to try and move ahead, but I don't imagine the Chinese are going to be playing that kind of game with each other. She took a, th a, a three kilo jump between opener and second. No, she is. She's going to go for it. She's going to go a three kilo jump between first and second, then a four between second and third. 
up to 93. I mean, she is a snatch world record holder. Clearly not in her best shape right now, but if she's... If anyone's going to go for it, maybe it's going to be her. And then, because of that, it might force Zhang Huihua to take 94 to just regain that lead. But it's good to see a little bit of competition spirit between these two Chinese lifters here. This will move Hu Jihui from fourth into the lead. She could play a much safer game and, and just get into the medals if she went for 92, which is the lightest she could have gone for just then. It would have bumped her into silver, but... The Olympic champion knows nothing but gold medals. At the World Championships, she only made 89. And that might be the best of all three. You know, she actually looked good for more there. The speed that the bar had after the knees just as she accelerated through the finish. Extraordinary. So one attempt remains, and of course we're going to go up a kilo, it's Zhang Huihua. Now this actually equals Zhang Huihua's best, she made 94 kilos at the World Championships in 2019 on her way to becoming World Champion. And we know really it must be that uh, Zhang Huihua wants to really prove herself here because you know she's a three-time world champion whereas Hu Jihui is only a one-time world champion and yet it was Hu Jihui who went to the Olympics and got to win and took that gold medal you know Hu Jihui did uh, 94 116 there 210 her best of course 213 that's the world record but I think it was that world record total from Hu Jihui that, that grabbed her that Olympic spot here's Zhang Huihua this will equal her best and give her the lead Wow. At some point in her life, she's going to have to take a shot at the world record. I'm not sure she could have made 97 today, but I also wouldn't put it past her. Another three kilos. She has incredible depth, such a different bottom position than Hu Jihui. You know, she just sort of tucks her hips down a little bit lower, just turns them in a little bit, and is able to access a little bit more depth there. So, after the snatches, the gold medal to China, 94 kilos Zhang Huihua, the silver medal to China, Hu Jihui with 93 kilos, and then the bronze medal, I believe, goes to, did Suk Chiron hit it first? I think she did at 90 kilos. I think she got it ahead of her teammate, Sir China, but both of the Athletes from Thailand are also at 90 kilos. And then for those wondering, Mirabai from India down at 85. It was a very strong opening attempt from her, but she just didn't quite have it. So that's going to be it for the snatch portion of this session. A quick reminder to everybody, we have, of course, made this uh, whole feed free. The whole Asian Championships we're going to stream. Uh, we ask for nothing other than maybe you check out the weightlifting house store. Of course, we have everything that you might need to be a weightlifter, whether that's belts, straps, tape, sleeves, t-shirts. Uh, and of course, if you want to try out weightlifting AI, all you need to do is you'd code two week trial and you get to, to try it for free for two weeks, as the code says. Uh, so we put the links down below if you want to check either of those out. And I think right now it looks like they're not going to show anything for the next few minutes. So I'm also going to uh, to mute unless uh, we get a lot of questions coming in, in which case I will endeavor to answer the ball. But we'll certainly be back with more competition in uh, in a few minutes' time.
Okay, so while we wait, we do actually have a few questions coming in, so I will uh, I'll get to some of these now. So the most anticipated battles uh, that we're looking to see here, uh, this is a question from uh, Rectodactyl, I guess is the name. Um, yeah, 49s, of course, is always going to be exciting because of the three world record holders. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing, I don't, I don't expect it to be much of a battle, but I'm very interested to see the form of Kuo Sung Chun in the women's 59s. Of course, she doesn't have the number one spot in the world right now, which she doesn't need, but with Yeni Alvarez having beaten her, that's the first time she's lost in such a long time. Uh, I think the last time she lost prior to that maybe was when she competed at 64 and she lost to Deng Wei from China. But I, I, I'm very excited to see what sort of shape she's in. The men's 61s, the battle between the two Olympic champions, Chen Lijun and Li Farbin. You know, Chen coming down, Li Farbin uh, sticking at 61 because he's in great shape. He just set that world record back in the world championships in the 61s, that 175. So he's in good shape. Chen Lijun was already as lean and muscular weightlifter as I think I've ever seen in person. And so for him to have lost an additional six kilos, apparently he's looking very skinny walking around to the Asian Championship. So uh, I think that would be fun. 89s, of course, you know, the return of Tian Tao, who I've been informed is in great shape. Uh, he'll be competing against Kino Shustami, who is also in good shape. We just saw him, uh, what did he do? 160, no, he just snatched 170 and it looked very comfortable. You know, he took the silver medal at the World Champs with 174, silver in the snatch. Uh, who else is there? L Lee Dayin, you know, a man who, again, holds so much muscle mass. He's going to be looking very good. In fact, we saw him in the training hall uh, a couple of days ago. He did a snatch pull. I'll post this on the Weightlift House Instagram shortly. He did a snatch pull with 250 kilos, and it looked pretty strong. So that'll be a fun battle. Uh, the women's 80... Is it 81s, I think? I think that's the category... Uh, where we have Wang Zhuyu, of course, who is one of the top weightlifters in the world uh, in that category. Uh, in fact, we have I think we have the one and two from the World Championships competing there. Uh, so that will be very exciting to see. Of course, Li Wenwen in, in the supers. But yeah, that women's 87s, I think, is going to be a whole lot of fun. Sorry, 81s. Uh, it's Wang Zhuyu and it's uh, Liang Xiaomei. Yang Xiaomei and Wang Zhu have put in for 265 kilo entry totals, which are massive. And of course, they want to make a bit of a statement with Salford Karanda having hit uh, 117, 255, 272 in the total, which is, you know, absolutely massive. She was an 87, but she only weighed 83.9, she told us. So uh, I think that the two Chinese are probably going to need to make a statement because they, they need to prove to their governing federation that they can be the number one athlete so that they get the slot and then of course yes the 102 so I'm excited for that Lesman in the snatch uh, uh, Jan Yon Hack in the snatch as well but also don't forget Nagisa Adilatuli who I, I think I see a comment below about him from the skating reptile Seb did you see the 190 block snatch from the Kazakh 89 I think you're referring to Nagisa he did 200 in the block snatch but he's a he's a 102 now <laughs> for this competition he's a really thickened up I suppose you might say uh, since the Asian Championships where did he com he competed at 96 in Asia I think uh, have a very strong snatcher but now that he's a 102 he's, he's looking phenomenal he did 190 from the floor he did 200 from the blocks and then his teammate Artem Antropov has bumped up to the 109s to compete for this category but yeah, the the 102s I think is going to be a lot of fun. Miso as well just snatched 183 in training. He's on the start list. So that should be a lot of fun. Rishab asks, are you not in Korea for this? No, we're not there. We're actually doing this from uh, from the UK. We were, of course, in Yerevan, Armenia for the European Championships. And the turnaround is just a little bit too tight. We do have somebody over there filming for us and getting us some high-quality content from the training hall and competition, which is which is great, really useful. Uh, but we are business as usual back at HQ and uh, just doing commentary from here. We're sent a feed from the 
uh, Asian Federation, and then we just add commentary over the top. So Samuel says he's he's grateful that we're doing the commentary, even if it's not the same setup that we previously had. Yeah, it's been a little bit tough working with the Asian Federation for this one. Uh, the way that things usually work is that there's one rights holder for everything, but they uh, didn't set it up quite like that, as they maybe ought to have for, for previous sessions, uh, previous competitions. So this was a little bit tough to, to try and get anything sorted. But the fact that we were able to get a stream is good. I know that the new head of of media for the Asian Federation uh, is, well, ESAC is going to make sure that this sort of thing doesn't happen again. So for future Asian Championships, I imagine that we're going to be doing it like we do with the World Championships and the European Championships where we're, we're there in person. We have, you know, seven or eight or nine or ten cameras. Uh, the whole thing will look a whole lot better. But because we weren't able to do that for this one, of course, we don't want to charge for that. So that's why we have the free stream, which is why we'd appreciate you all checking out weightlifthouse.com picking up any of your, your weightlifting needs. Yes, Sarab as well, competing at 102, is in the B session apparently. I'll take a little look at that. Presumably as a 102. Can't imagine Sarab cutting down to 96 these days. Yep, Sarab Maradi, 102. He's put in 377, which is very light. For a man, of course, who snatched 189 and clean jerked 233 as a 94-kilo lifter. And then what were his records at 96? He snatched 186, I believe it was, in 2018. And then he clean and jerked. I want to say 231, maybe, before, of course, it was then taken by Tian Tao. Okay, so it looks like we may well now be back with the clean and jerks from this women's 49 kilo category, the first Olympic category from the Asian Championships. This is live from Jinju, South Korea. Here's Windy Isa opening up very light at 95. And something is going on with Windy Isa for her to be looking like this. You know, at the World Championship, she clean shirt 96 only, having made 106 of the Asian Championships just six months prior to that. 110 at the Olympic Games. She hadn't been under 100 kilos since 2019 at the Junior World Championships. And now to be at 95 and be missing cleans like that, there's something going on, whether it's her, her health, whether it's her motivation, uh, we don't know, but a real shame. Also, as expected, worth mentioning that our athlete from Turkmenistan has indeed pulled out, as uh, as I thought she might do. So Yulduz Jumabayeva, who missed all of her snatches, not going to carry on in the clean and jerk. Or maybe she is. That dash could just be the fact that she can't place anywhere. But she may well be clean and jerking. One minute. Yeah, actually, just checking our official scoreboard. Looks like she will be clean and jerking. So she'll be the next athlete out. But Windy Ice, of course, is going to have to follow herself here, which is not a lot of fun. Especially when you miss a clean. Let's see how this one looks. 15 kilos shy of her best. Such a slow pull and she double bounces with it, but I think it's extremely unlikely that she's going to get up with that. Her best bet may well be to wind down the time a little bit, bump up to 96 kilos and let the 
Do you remember by Ava come out for 96? Just get a tiny little bit more rest. Of course, she will have a two minute clock here, but it probably works out to being a little bit over two minutes if she plays the cards right. Windy Ice are apparently injured. Thank you, Christian, for letting us know about that. So unfortunately, it's unlikely that we're going to get Max Ata over to do the commentary for this session. He, We were initially planning on, on getting him out, but because we weren't sure what was going to be happening with our streaming of the Asian Championships, it just seemed like a, a lot for him to come out. Okay, Windy Aisha has decided to just follow herself once more. She walks out very slowly, doesn't look hugely uh, excited for this lift. But hopefully she can at least put up a total. She's gonna need to double bounce it again. Triple, four, no. Just looks like she's got absolutely no strength in those legs at all. And so that's Unfortunately, Windy Isa out of this championships. A second athlete to put up no total. She totaled 176 kilos at the Asian, sorry, the World Championships. But as it stands, she's nowhere near the top 10 in the world. As mentioned earlier, 182. 183 is going to be the weight needed to enter the top 10 if you're not currently in it. But of course, we're actually going to see Hu Jihui looking to bump ahead of Zhang Huihua. Because Zhang Huihua occupies that number one spot and is the only Chinese athlete in the top ten because you can only have one enter per country. So Hu Jihui isn't even on the list, so she's going to try and move ahead of that 206 from Zhang Huihua here. That's a tough 96 clean, but a very, very snappy jerk. Great lockout for Jimmo Baeva. Great way to come back after missing all of her snatches. Her best clean and jerk is, uh, well, in recent years, we're looking at around the 98. She did 101 uh, back in 2019. She actually made 107 kilos as a 48 back in 2017, right around the time when Turkmenistan was hosting international competitions. So that's when she peaked. She's also going to have to follow herself, I'd imagine, because a four kilo jump up to 100 kilos is potentially unlikely to be a good move. That 96 looked a little bit tough and clean. Very nice technique, but just a little bit heavy standing up. As you can see, we have three athletes with 100 Sorry, two athletes with 100 kilos written in. Two with 110. Lots of heavy lifts. Not on the on the start list. I'm not sure why. It's been a few years since we've seen him now. Was he in 2021? at the Asian Championships, he may well have been. But, of course, he gained weight from the 85s all the way up to 89s and then the 96s. His clean and jerk looked, well, his clean looked stronger and stronger. His jerk was catching up to his cleaning strength, but his snatch always lagged a little bit behind. Okay, so another kilo bumped up here for Jamal Baeva, 99 kilos. Oh, 
grinds it out with one bounce. But her jerk is just so good. It's interesting how you can notice a technical model from one country. Just the way she did that looked very similar to a lot of the athletes from Turkmenistan. I actually, when she did that, I sort of had flashbacks to Toychev, who physically couldn't be a further apart type of athlete. You know, he probably weighs 160 kilos and he's six foot three or something like that, but very similar jerks. Similar lockouts, head positioning, lower body positioning. I think I've mentioned this on a live stream before, but last time I saw Toychev, or the penultimate time I saw Toychev was about two days before he competed at the Asian Championships. And we'd all been at the dining hall in the hotel. And uh, the ath the team from Turkmenistan was there. And then I stayed up editing quite late. And then at about midnight, he came back down. And uh, there's still some food out. And he made up a, a, a large plate of cakes and ate those. And, of course, he didn't have to worry about the weighing in because he's a super. So I still don't know if he was sneaking down or if that was part of the protocol. That's a nice, clean... And a solid jerk. So Chang is going to get on the board there with 100 kilos. So 180 in the total. So she can make a real push at moving up into a nice position in the top eight here. She's not yet in it. Sorry, the top 10 in the world. 183 would move her up into ninth place. That would equal Julia Imperio's eighth position at the moment, which she got from Yerevan. But as this qualifying period pans out, I imagine more and more athletes are going to push up into those mid-80s. We may see athletes needing 185 or more to really stick that top 10. That's the easiest clean we've seen so far. And a decent jerk. So that's 100 kilos for Dinty Fam, coupled with a 79 snatch, puts her at 179, a kilo behind Cheng Lin. So it's probably going to be Juma Baeva out next with 101, which is a big lift for her these days. Okay, having missed all of her snatches, this really would be quite special if she was able to come back out and make this lift. The clean was ever so tough on her first attempt, even tougher on her second, but she grinded it out. She's going to have to get the perfect bounce, the perfect balance in the pull, which she can't get. You can just see the bar didn't have enough speed. She didn't even have enough time to to really pull herself under it left side came through, right side never really made it. She just had that internal rotation with the right hip, which is not structurally very sound. So as soon as the weight really landed, that knip, knee just came in, little knee touch on the floor. And of course, there's no coming back from that position. So Cheng Jing Lin should be the next athlete out with 102, which is Interesting. I, d I don't know if the coaches in the back room are going to be playing or even looking at the top 10 in the world right now. But one more kilo would move her into that position, whereas this will not. We have three athletes with 182 in the world rankings right now, and she's going to be the fourth. But also, they may be feeling very strong, and they know they've got a third attempt in them, so they might not be particularly interested in making that. It's a tough clean again. Yeah. 
Wow. She just drops so deep in the jerk. You know, she doesn't put a lot of resistance into catching it for quite a while. So she just drops that back knee, keeps dropping it, and then suddenly puts the brakes on. But that looked heavy. That looked pretty maximal. You know, 103, 104. 104, maybe a, a, a top's weight is all she's going to be able to get out of that. 184 would put her in eighth in the world ranking. We're seeing the same thing again now. Well, we're just going to equal the 9th, 10th, and 11th ranking and 12th now with Chen. So this is going to put Ding Pham in 13th in the world ranking. Just one more kilo and these athletes would be in the top 10. Another strong clean. Oh, I don't think she's going to get given that one, unfortunately. Right elbow was fine. Left elbow was very suspect. And she knows. She's beckoning to her coach. She knows what happened there. We've not yet seen any anyone be challenged. No challenge cards played by coaches. So, Dinti Pham has got two minutes on the clock to follow herself. She could always bump up, try and pull out Cheng Lin for 104, but no real need. She's not going to get really any more time by doing that. Although, 104 would be the number that would get her into the top 10. So, But again, we don't know if these coaches are looking at these numbers in the back room. Are they just playing the, the competition that's in front of them? Or are they playing the wider game that is qualifying for the Olympics? I think that's what's making this sport a little bit more exciting in some ways for this Olympic qualifying period is that Every competition that we're watching is just one of a larger, greater competition. So athletes are going to have to keep one eye on the athletes right there in front of them. One and one eye on uh, on previous performances from athletes around the world. 103 kilogram, third Athens, Vietnam, Pham Dinh Thi. Pham Dinh Thi 선수가 성공할 수 있도록 응원의 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. Wow. Let's see what they make of that one. Yep, good lift. So, 182 in the total for our athlete from Vietnam. So, Dinti Pham is going to be just a kilo under a personal best there. You know, she totaled 183 at the Southeast Asian Games last year, last May, almost a year ago today, actually, where she placed second, 81.03. Then she did 81.02 at the World Championships. And then, of course, today, 79.103. Okay, this is an important lift, really, for Cheng Jin Lin. It will move her into the top 10 in the world if she makes it. If you're in the top 10 in the world, at the end of the qualifying period, you get to go to the Olympics. Wow. Better jerk, I think, than even a second attempt if she can hold on. And she can. And that's an absolutely massive lift. She had a tough time of it in the snatch. She missed... Two attempts, she missed her opener and third attempt, so ended up with that 80, which actually was a personal best, I believe, by a kilo. But 80104, 184 in the total. And suddenly she's in at number eight in the world. Same total as Jessica Hernandez from Mexico, but Hernandez hit that first, so she's going to.
Monaco in at number eight, moving ahead of Julia Imperio, who is now bumped down to nine. Tanithon Sukhtaroen uh, is at now down at 10, but she's now competing in this. She, she got in at the top 10 as a 45 because she lifted so much. So she's going to leapfrog all of them again. Bump people back down. And here she is right now. And a massive lift there, 105 kilos, which, let's take a look at this because Tanithon hit 100 at the World Championships as 45, but she, she snatched 90 today as well, so she's at 195 in the total, and it looked like nothing. So she's just moved from ninth place up to fifth in the world. She just bumped Nina Sturks down to number six. Her next lift will presumably move her up ahead again. She could be certainly hitting 200 or more. She could be a top two totalist in the world rankings after this competition, potentially. She's looking to be in great shape. And nice to see her not power clean and flex on everyone like she did at the World Championships. Huji Hui making that extension and turnover look as easy as normal. A little bit slow on the jerk, but the lockout's there, so that's going to be a good lift for, for Ji Hui. So 90, what did she snatch? Was it 93 or 94? She snatched 93. That 107 gets her 200 kilo total. But of course, as much as she is playing against these athletes here, she's also playing against trying to move back ahead of Zhang Huihua in the rankings. It's tough if you're Hu Zhi Hui because, you know, right now we have all these athletes ranking in the top 10 and they're totaling 183 and 184. She's just totaled 200 kilos and she's not even there because the only way she can be shown, the only way she can be present on that board is to beat Zhang Huihua because you can only put one athlete per nation in the top 10 and Zhang Huihua has that spot and she has it at number one. So... Hu Ji Hui is absent from the rankings until she beats that 206. Sook so Tarouin out with 108, another three kilos, another huge personal best. Considering how our opening attempt looked, this shouldn't be too hard. I don't think she even wears a belt or knee sleeves. Yeah, a little bit harder work than the opening attempt. You can see in the bottom of the clean, didn't get a great bounce, just a little bit of almost collapse in the back, such a long spine. But she's put up a big lift there. So Mirabai now, the world record holder in the clean and jerk at 119 kilos, coming out at 109. She's got a lot of work to do after only an 85 kilo snatch. Mirabai, of course, is pretty safe in the world rankings at number two, 200 kilo total. But really, I mean, she is nine kilos down on Zhang Huihua in the snatch, so she'd need to out, out clean and jerk her by 10 kilos, which is almost certainly going to be an impossibility. She's one of three athletes still yet to open. Kambao from Thailand and then Zhang Huihua. They both want 110. Nice clean. 
She rarely gets a bounce, but she's so strong on the legs. And such a confident jerk. Brilliant stuff there from Mirabai. Puts herself up at 194 kilos in the total. So currently in bronze. Two athletes still to open who will move ahead of her though. But I've seen her squat 150 kilos in person before. Mirabai. Very strong legs. So if anyone's going to get up with a 120 kilo world record clean, it is likely to be her. And so the blues come on. We're at 110. Two athletes want this weight. Three, four athletes want this weight. So, Zhang Huihua now, who of course has a personal best in the clean and jerk of 118 kilos, which she's made three times. First time she did it was at the EGAT Cup, though she was a 55 kilo lifter there. She did it again at the World Champs in 2019, which she won. She did it again at the Asian Championships, 2020, well, it's the 2020 Asian Champs held in 2021. So let's see what sort of shape she's in here. Very easy. Yeah, definitely capable of a little bit more. <laughs> I would have thought there. And that's going to be worrisome for Hu Ji Hui who will of course now be a little bit concerned about the fact that she's going to need a colossal cleaner jerk to move ahead. She's going to need, well, I mean, she can make it. She's only a kilo behind in the snatch, but if she wants to move ahead of Hu Ji Hui's 206 and go for 207, that's where she's going to have a little bit of work cut out for her. She'd need at least 114 kilos to do that. And that's assuming that Zhang Hui Hua doesn't make any more in the cleaner jerk. But before we get there, we have our other athlete from Thailand, Surachana Kambao. 107 is her best. This is a heavy opener. And she's up with it. A oh, great jerk. I mean, it has to be said, it's one of the hardest looking openers that we've seen in from this front pack. Certainly harder than her teammate, Tanya Son Suk Chiroen. But they're both on the board, these two athletes from Thailand. And they're both looking good. So Kambao is at 200 in the total. Hu Ji Hui is at 200. Suk Chiroen's at 198. She's asking for 110, but you would assume she would Maybe ask for 111 to move ahead. We'll have to see if she does come out for this. They already made a mistake with her in the snatches. That one kilo bump from 87 to 88. No, she is going to come out for this. So this is going to put her up at 200 kilos, which will keep her in fourth place because, of course, Hu Ji Hui and Kambao already made 200 kilos and then Hui Hua is at 204. But, you know, maybe she's just looking to put up a total that was going to guarantee her place at the Olympics and this almost certainly will do that. She's almost certainly probably going to be going but 200 will do it. Oh what a fight. Every one of her lifts, 6 for 6, great performance there from Tanya Son Suk Chiron. 90, 110, 200 kilo total. Having moved up from the 45 she's got to be happy with that. Huge personal best, 8 kilo best in the Snatch 10 kilo best in the clean and jerk. 200 kilo total. So Hushi Hui next at 111. And this really is the battle now for the medals. I would have thought Suk Chiron was going to be in it, but I, I actually think it's going to be Zhang Hui Hua, Hu Ji Hui, Kambao, and then 
Mirabai presumably is going to want to put in just an absolutely massive clean inject to try and move ahead of Kambao. Or maybe move ahead of Huji Hui, but I think Huji Hui's probably got a little bit more in the clean and jerk than Kambao does from Thailand. But we'll see. This now 111. Looks pretty good so far. 117 is her best, which she's made a few times, but that 111 was fine. Very narrow grip overhead. But such a solid lockout. It looks like she sort of hobbles off the platform there in a little bit of pain in her left leg, maybe knee. Let's take a. Well, I suppose there are no replays yet. We're hoping to get that set up for future A sessions. So 204, interestingly, from Hu Jihui, was just going to equal Zhang Hui Hua's 204. But of course, the Chinese team knows the Chinese team well. They know Zhang Hui Hua is presumably in tip-top shape. And also, what's exciting is 110 to 115. That puts in your head that maybe we're going to see a 115 to 120, which would be a world record, which I think, I think we saw Zhang Hui Hua attempt a world record at the World Championships. Here's 112. She's already in bronze. This will keep her in bronze in the total, but it will move her ahead in the clean and jerk. Oh, she just can't hold on. It's a similar miss to what we saw in her opening snatch, I believe, where she just didn't quite lock out and the miss behind. We see the same thing there again. So in the women's 49s at the World Championships, we did see a world record attempt from Zhang Huihua at 120. And that was after a 110 opener. So I have a feeling that's what we're going to be uh, potentially seeing here, a world record attempt. We only got one world record, well, two technically, because we had it in the total as well, from the European Championships. That was an Asar in the 89s. I expect we will see an assault on a few world records at this Asian Championships. So she's going to be able to follow herself here. She's already got that. Well, actually, she hasn't got medal guaranteed, of course because Mirabai is still in the running. She may well be six kilos down in the total, so she'll need... Mirabai will actually need 116 kilos to move ahead in the total to 201. But I just don't know if she's going to be willing to take a seven kilo jump. She currently has 115 in, which would just move her into a better position in, in the cleaner jerk, but not the total. So Sutrana Kambao, final attempt. She snatched 90, 110 on her opener. This 202 would actually give her the second biggest total from any 49 since the qualifying period opened up for the Olympics. And that's a great clean. Have to be a bit quick on the lockout, but again, third missed behind from her six attempts. So two for six, but 200 kilos. And I suppose most importantly for her is she did it before her teammate. Who they both have 200 kilos, but she did it first because she made it on her opening attempt, which came before such a Rowan's third attempt at 110, which means that she currently has the Olympic slot. So she's got the third highest total in the world right now, uh, which has bumped a few people down and out of the top 10.
It's going to be interesting to see how quickly the IWF updates their top 10 lists. For those of you wondering where I'm seeing that list, I will actually put a link to it in the chat right now. Okay, so Zhang Huihua down to 113. This is the same weight that she hit at the World Championships, and it very cleverly gives her a 207 total, which, what a great lift, that's going to just move her lead in the world rankings up by another kilo. She's just bumping it up a kilo at a time from 206 she made in, in Bogota for the number one rank in the world. Now it's 207. She's just making life a little bit harder for Hu Ji Hui. Hu Ji Hui is going to need 115 kilos to move ahead of her. And here's the prediction. If Hu Ji Hui makes 115, we'll see Zhang Hui Hua go for 116 and 117 because she'll just want to reclaim that lead straight away. She, she has no interest in Hu Ji Hui moving ahead of her in the world rankings and taking that Chinese slot because the 49s is one of those categories where it just seems very unlikely that China won't take one of their three athletes from that's from that category. If she misses the 115, I imagine we're going to see Zhang Huihua potentially go for a world record 120. But then, of course, we have Mirabai, who looks like she wants 115. She'll be the next athlete out. This will give her the lead in the clean and jerk, but she will still be sat outside of the medals in the total. This will put her at 200, so she'll be sat in fifth place because we already have two athletes at 200, the two tie lifters. But she'll have an attempt after that to move ahead in the in the total. 115 kilograms. This is third assist. China, Hu Ji. Thank you, Matilda Wolf, and your strike now. Down the Chubo Play, the general Tonsu, Chungu, Ho Chu, Sung Tonsu. Okay, so Mirabai has withdrawn, which is a real shame. I, I think she must be hurt. So the world record holder in the clean jack is out, which means that Hu Ji Hui, the Olympic champion, the world record holder in the total, don't forget, 213 kilos, is coming out now. This is for the lead and the number one world ranking. This will move Zhang Kuihua out of the running if she makes it, who will then have one attempt remaining to move ahead. Huge pull that she just gets up with it. But nothing there, which means that even though she has the second highest total in the world, Hu Ji Hui, Olympic champion, does not sit in the rankings for Paris 2024 because she hasn't been able to get ahead of Zhang Kui Hua's 207. 120 is being asked for a world record attempt. I think we called it here. And uh, we're going to get to see, this is at least Zhang Kuihua's second attempt at this. Of course, we saw her do it at the World Championships in Bogota. She had the exact same progression. 110, 113, 120. The 113 sealed the deal, so she made the jump. It sealed the deal again today, so she made the jump again. She once had the world record in the clean jerk at 118 kilos and the total at 212. Then, of course, those were taken. And then she attempted 120 in Bogota. And she's attempting 120 again now. And to be honest, with the way that she's looking, I think it's definitely possible. 94 in the snatch she made. She's currently 5 for 5. One attempt remains. Could it be that in our first Olympic category, we see a world record, a 7 kilo jump? I would love to know if she hit anything in the back room or if she just made this seven kilo jump. I imagine she just made it and she's fired up. And what will this do? Seven kilos. Oh, this will also be a world record total. Oh, it's very tough, but she's up with it. 
Oh, and you could just see a little bit of a little bit of knee wobble, almost as though she was about to initiate the jerk, and she just said, "No, it's not going to happen today." So unfortunately, Zhang Kuihua once again has been uh, n unable to make that 120 kilos. But you know what? She doesn't need it. She goes five for six, 207 in the total. She extends her uh, lead as the number one 49 in the world. Mirabai, of course, even though she pulled out, still sits at number two in the world. But let's just let's just look at the rankings. Uh, for this competition before we worry about world rankings. The gold medal to China, Zhang Kuihua, 94-113. The silver medal also to China, 93-111. And then the bronze medal, who did it first? I believe it was Surachana Kambao made the 200 before her teammate, Tanithon Sukhchowen, made 200. Sukhcha Rowan, of course, went 6 for 6, 91 10, having bumped up from that uh, 45 kilo category. So she's the runner up. But a great session. We had two bomb outs, unfortunately. Windy, Windy Aisha from Indonesia missed all of her lifts at 95. And of course, Juma Baeva missed all of her snatches at 75. But to, to see two totals exceed the best total from prior to this, and then two more people join that 200 kilo club. We've definitely seen a bit of a restructuring on the rankings for Paris in the women's 49 kilo category. That's going to be it from us now. But uh, we will, of course, be back tomorrow. We have a lot more coming on. It's the women's 55s, and then we'll be back with commentary for the men's 61s. We get to see the battle of the two Olympic champions, Chen Lijian and Li Farbin. We'll see you there.